Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can install MB on a Raspberry Pi. So MB is a home media server uh, and it's best compared to Plex or Jellyfin. So I recently created a video on how you can install Jellyfin on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'll leave a pop-up for that now if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, but basically Jellyfin is a forked version of MB. So MB used to be an open source application, now it is closed source. So Jellyfin is the forked open source version of that. So Jellyfin and MB are very similar, but in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can install MB. So real quick before we get started, I just wanna mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of the video. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach an external hard drive and that external hard drive is gonna have all of our media on it. So if you're using something like a NAS, it's probably a good idea to just run MB off of that NAS. Uh, especially if you're using like a Synology NAS, you can install it from the package center, or I recently created a video on how you can install it using Docker. Um, but basically it's just gonna probably perform a little better on that. And instead of having to mess around with SMB shares, you'll be able to just access all the data locally. So in this video, we're gonna do everything from an external hard drive. So the idea is that you have your Raspberry Pi, you have an external hard drive next to it, and basically all of your media files will be stored on there. Uh, and MB is gonna pick up all of that data. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run a few commands, which is going to create a directory for all of our media. And then we're basically gonna mount that uh, external hard drive to that directory. And every single time that the uh, the Raspberry Pi is started, it will automatically map that external hard drive to that folder, and then MB will read that. So there's a few things that you'll have to be aware of. Uh, and the first is that you're gonna have to have a separate folder for all of your media. So if you have your movies, you'll have a movies folder, a TV shows folder. If you wanna put your music on there, you can create a music folder. But basically that external hard drive will store all of those files. Um, now, when we edit our fstab file, what we're doing is we are mapping it so that it automatically runs on boot. Uh, and you'll notice that there is a no fail parameter inside of that. And basically, that's just saying that if you turn on your Raspberry Pi and it does not have the external hard drive in it, uh, meaning that it's not attached, it will continue to boot. Generally, with the fstab file, if you uh, if you set something up there and you don't set that no fail parameter, when the operating system boots, you're gonna probably run into a few errors. So I basically just did a voiceover on all the commands. Uh, and if it was hard to follow, check out the written instructions because I have everything listed there. You basically just have to run a few commands and then everything will be mapped properly. So once that's done, you are going to launch Portainer. Um, so if you don't have Docker and Portainer installed on your Raspberry Pi, I'll leave a pop-up for that now. You're going to have to install that. Um, so Portainer is basically just a management console for Docker, uh, and we're going to be using that to create a Docker container, which has MB installed on it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into Volumes, and we're going to select Add Volume. From there, you're going to give that volume a name. So it's important to highlight that this volume will store all of your configuration data. So basically, when you go in and you configure MB, all of the important configuration files are mapped to this uh, MB folder that we created. So basically, if you want to back up your MB installation, what you do is you back up this individual folder. So to quickly just talk through this, all of your media files are stored on your external hard drive. So it's important to back those up as well. I'm not saying that you know you only have to back up this one folder. Uh, but you have to back up this folder and that media folder, and then basically all of your container will be properly backed up. So after the volume is created, you have to take a look at this mount point. So basically we have a path here, and this path is mapped back to a location on our Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna be using something called a stack, and we're gonna get to that in a second. But you have to copy this path and save it somewhere because we're gonna need it in a second. So once that's done, you can select stacks and then add stack. So in the written instructions, I have a Docker compose file that you can copy. Uh, basically what this does is this stores all of the configuration for this individual container. So there's a few things inside of here that you might wanna go ahead and modify. Uh, the first thing would be the, um, the time zone. So add your time zone, whatever that might be. Um, and then the second thing is in the volume section, you're gonna have to map the volume path that you just created above. So for me, I'm putting my MB volume path. It might be the same, uh, but if it's different, you'll have to change that here. You will also have to change the second volume for your media path if you're using a folder path that is different than mine. 
One additional thing is the PUID and the PGID. So they're both listed as a thousand. These are the default values for the Pi user. So if you're using a user that is different than the Pi user, you might wanna go ahead and change these values, but generally you're probably gonna use the Pi user so you can leave these as default. The last thing to quickly talk through would be the ports. So if you're using 8960 or 8920 on your Raspberry Pi for anything else, you might have to go ahead and change those here. Once you finish all that, you can give the stack a name and then you could deploy the stack. Give it a few minutes and then you should be able to navigate to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and port 8096. Once you get there, you should be brought through the MB setup. So you're gonna have to pick your language and then you can go in and you can create your user account. Once that's done, you're gonna have to add your content types. So you're gonna have to do this for every type of media file that you have. So if you have one for movies and TV shows, you'll do that here. And basically you're just gonna point back to the media folder uh, and inside of that, any folders that you might have created there. So that media folder should have everything, your music, your movies, and your TV shows. Once that's done, you can select your preferred metadata language, and then the next step is gonna ask you to configure remote access. So for me, I always uncheck UPnP, um, so that's enable automatic port mapping. I always disable that, and it's basically just a security concern. You don't necessarily want UPnP to automatically be opening ports on your router without your knowledge. Um, so that's kind of general advice. Um, it's obviously something you can use if you'd like, uh, but it's something that I try and stay away from. At this point, you can accept the terms and service, and then you can select finish. Uh, you'll then be able to log in with your username and password. And at this point, it's going to crawl in all of your data. So whatever media files you have on your external hard drive at this time, it's going to start to crawl all of those in. So give it a little while and everything should map properly. So the final thing that I want to talk about that we're not going to be going over in this video uh, is if you want to expose this outside of your network, I suggest that you use a reverse proxy. Um, so I have a tutorial on how you can set up Nginx Proxy Manager on your Raspberry Pi. I will leave a pop-up for that now. But basically, if you want to expose this externally, you can install that application, you can create a new proxy host, and then you'll be able to securely expose it outside of your network. So it's definitely not something that you have to do, but if you'd like to, you can. So that just about wraps up the tutorial for today. If you follow these instructions, you should be able to connect an external hard drive to your Raspberry Pi, uh, and then you'll be able to go through, configure MB, and uh, everything will slowly start to crawl in. So like I said earlier, make sure that you back up your media files and your uh, configuration folder. You'll then have to configure MB as you'd like, and if you'd like to expose this outside of your network, check out Nginx Proxy Manager. So that wraps up the video for today. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.